Yalong Zhao, who will talk about uh, towards the complexification of Donaldson with the TQFT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction and this invitation. So um, I will present a joint work with uh, uh, Gu Fang Zhao from Melbourne and Zhi uh, Jun Zhou from Shanghai. So let me first uh, recall this uh, uh, four manifold Donaldson theories. So we start with this. Uh, sorry. Okay. We start with this uh, real oriented four manifolds closed, and we can consider Donaldson invariants, which counts uh, so called instantons or anti self dual connections on these four manifolds. And we can consider this, uh, uh, the four manifolds uh, decomposed into this uh, union of two four manifolds with boundary along this uh, D, and consider the uh, gluing formula, which relate to the relative invariance here and the, the, the the Donaldson invariance on the closed four manifolds, which uh, fits into this uh, uh, Donaldson written TQFT structures. So now we are interested in the complexification of this left column. So we consider this a uh, complexification of uh, real oriented four manifolds, uh, which is a uh, complex four folds with a uh, holomorphic volume form. So we are considering club L four folds. And the uh, analogy of Donaldson invariance in this case is so called Donaldson Thomas invariance. Uh, which counts uh, a similar uh, instantons, but it's so-called SU4 instanton because this is a club L4 folds. And because now we are in the edge geometry setting, so there's, uh, there are much more things we can do. We, we can actually count coherent sheaves, uh, uh, edge geometry objects on, on this club L4 folds. So similarly, we can um, consider degeneration of club L4 folds into the uh, union of two four folds uh, with a uh, Along anti -canonical, common anti canonical device D. So D is now an anti canonical device of both uh, Y plus and Y minus. So by a junction, we know that D itself is a collabial three fold. So, so the question um, we want to discuss today is uh, what is the analogy of gluing formula here, and also potentially the, what is the uh, underlying TQFT in this, in this sense? So uh, let me, because there's a TQFT structures, so let me first talk about this vector space associated to this uh, 3D theory. So uh, in the real case, we start with uh, oriented closed real free manifolds, this D. And there's a Chen Simons function uh, on this uh, space of all connections. And we can consider the so called instanton flow homology, roughly speaking, this is the infinite dimensional most homology of this uh, uh, Chen Simons functional. So in the complexification case, we consider collabial free folds. So we know that this uh, holomorphic Chen Simons, and this uh, holomorphic cousin of this uh, instanton flow homology, which roughly speaking is the infinite dimensional version of this uh, vanishing cycle shift homology associated to this uh, complex value functions. But this is an uh, infinite dimensional case. So to make sense, this uh, uh, right-hand side, um, we, we just need to be precise. So MD, let's say this is a moduli of bundles or sheaves on, on our Calabria free for D. To make sense, this homology theory, so the key structures, uh, the following theorems due to uh, Pantip, Tom, Vakir, Vizosi, and uh, uh, Bruce, Busy, Joyce. So which roughly says this moduli of sheaf on Calabria free for D uh, has a derived enhancement with minus one shift sympathy structures. And the key property of this uh, uh, minus one shift sympathy structure locally is uh, it can be written as a critical locus of, uh, of uh, functions on this uh, smooth variety U. So now, the idea is that we want to glue this uh, uh, local perverse sheet for vanishing cycles along this, uh, on, on this uh, uh, moduli, global moduli space, and then we want to take the uh, hypercore homology of this uh, perverse sheaf. So this gluing is done by the, this two group of people, and in the gluing, we need the so-called orientation data due to conservatory and Soberman, which is a square root of the virtual canonical bundle. But let's say for simplicity today that the uh, MD is a global critical locus uh, written as a, uh, from a smooth variety W and a regular function or polynomial function on this uh, uh, smooth space W. And MD is the, this global critical locus 
So we, are, we don't need to worry about this uh, glue in, in this talk. So in this case, uh, our, state, our state space, just uh, HMD, is the, is the vanishing cycle homology. Also, people call it as a critical homology because it's relevant to the critical locus. And as some situation, we also add the equivalency with respect to this uh, flavor symmetry F0. So let me give you two examples of uh, this uh, critical locus. The first is uh, uh, relevant to the so-called gauge linear theorem model. So we consider this uh, W to be the total space of this canonical bundle of P4, and we present as uh, this uh, C star quotient. And we can write this uh, uh, function phi to be this uh, P, P, which is the coordinate of C, times this uh, uh, polynomial, x1 uh, fifth power to the x5 fifth power. This x1 to x5 is the coordinate on C5 here. So then we can take the critical locus uh, of these functions and, and check that this is the uh, uh, hypersurface in CP4 cut out by this uh, uh, polynomial equations, which is the famous quantity freefall. And then in this case, the vanishing cycle shift homology reduced to this uh, Boremo homology of this uh, quantity freefalls. So we recovered this uh, quantity freefall homology. Um, so this is a compact example where there's a critical locus, uh, it's a compact manifold. And let me give another example which is non-compact. So it's given by so-called quiver with potentials. So here we draw this uh, diagram of this quiver. Uh, we have this uh, circle vertex, we have this box vertex. We consider this uh, uh, certain maps between this uh, um, uh, vertexes. And here we have three loops and just a one framing, framing path. And let's consider the uh, representation of this quiver where we uh, give this uh, vector space V in this uh, circle vertex and we put a, a, a one dimensional vector space in this uh, framing vertex. And then the, the, the representation space is basically considering this home from V to V because this is a loop. And we consider this uh, three times of this uh, home space because we have three loops, A, B, C. And we consider this home from C to V, which I just write V here. So this uh, a gauge group, GLV, acts on this uh, representation space by, conjugate, by just conjugation action here and also a left or right multiplication, depends on the notations. And this function now is, is written as the, a trace of this uh, uh, a times B bracket C, where this B bracket C is this uh, standard bracket in the, in the matrix. So um, in this case, there's an interesting uh, flavor symmetry, uh, F, which is a C star free. Uh, I just write this uh, action here. This is coordinates T1 to T3. It's the coordinate for C star free. And the X on ABC just by standard just left multiplications. And we take a subtorus, which preserves this uh, uh, holomorphic volume forms. So it's T1 times T2 times T3 equals to 1. So this is a, a two-dimensional torus. So in this case, the critical locus of phi uh, is the so-called uh, Hilbert scheme of n points on C3. And this is non-compact non because C3 is non-compact. And the, the interesting thing is that the, it's equivalently equiv 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 compact with respect to this uh, flavor symmetry F0. And the, the fixed point is uh, uh, labeled by this so-called uh, 3D Young diagrams uh, where we lay 3D boxes um, and the, the number of boxes is this uh, uh, given n here, this the dimension of the vector space. Uh, and, and in this case, the vanishing cycle shift homology, which I take to be uh, equivalent, equivalent vanishing cycle shift homology with respect to this flavor symmetry group, is the so-called fits into this cohomological DT theories, uh, which is relevant to uh, uh, the sub subject of geometric representation theory. Okay, so now let's talk about, talk about this uh, uh, relative 4D theories, uh, where this, uh, our four-folds come in. And we start with this uh, YD is a smooth log Calabi L4 pair, where this Y is a, a smooth uh, four-folds, and D is a smooth anti-canonical divisor. So we know D is a Calabi L3 fold by a junction. So because we are talking about this relative theory, we want to restrict sheaves from Y to, to D. So this is by relative theories. So we have two kinds of restriction map. 
So one is just a classical restriction. The other is the derived restriction, which resolve f by complex of better bundle and take a restriction. Uh, they have their own advantages. So the, the left-hand side is, uh, is better for geometric purposes, and the right-hand side is uh, better for this homological algebra uh, purpose. And we, we want to consider f on this uh, uh, space y, such that these uh, two restrictions are the same. So this is, we call this a relative condition. Let's take, for example, that the f is an ideal sheaf of a subscheme C here. So this picture is a y is a fourfold, d is a, a divisor in this fourfold, which is our calabria threefold. And if we consider here, this, for example, a curve in this, uh, uh, in this uh, fourfold y. And then this uh, relative condition requires that this curve has some uh, 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 intercept this divisor d in some nice way. And, and, and then this force that the moduli of such f does not have companions. So the solution is that we, we should consider the so-called expanded pairs on, on these configurations, which we take the origin, origin of y, and we, when this curve just intersect this divisor not in a good way, then we just, just do blow up, and we keep adding these bubbles, where this bubble is the projective bundle over this, uh, um, over this divisor d, and then we consider configuration of this uh, curve in this uh, expanded pairs. And now the, the thing is that if we fix topological data like curve classes, so we only need finite number of these uh, uh, bubbles. So we can start you know, at finite number of steps. And uh, Jing Li and Bao Sun Wu, they develop a, a moduli theory of, of such sheaves on expanded pairs with relative conditions on this uh, a divisor D. And then there's a restriction map from this relative moduli to this uh, moduli sheaf on on the Calabria favor D, simply just intersect this, uh, this sheaf with this last device of D. And moreover, this uh, moduli is, uh, is proper if, if Y is proper. And if it's, it's equivalently proper, if Y is equivalently proper. So now, given this uh, restriction map, this relative modular sheaf on, y, on four folds, restricted to this uh, modular sheaf on three folds, and re recall that we always assume this talk that this is a global critical locus from this uh, uh, smooth variety W. And now the question is uh, about this relative theory is whether we have a natural map uh, from this uh, vanishing cycle sheaf homology to Bremo homology of this, uh, to this four fold moduli. And, and, and this is related to a conjecture of Joyce. And similarly, you can consider a case theoretical version because this is a global critical locus. You can consider the, the analogy of this vanishing cycle sheaf homology, uh, which is so-called critical K theory, is defined by the uh, Gaussian group of the matrix foundation category of this uh, uh, smooth variety and this uh, function phi to this uh, K theory of the, the, the four form moduli. And because we have uh, a properness in the, in the left hand si right hand side, we can take a, a push forward to a point, or you can very push forward to a point, and obtain this, uh, this, the, this, the, the evaluation of states on, on here. So we have a map from this vector space to, to Q. Okay, so, so now the, 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 uh, the question is uh, whether we can construct this map here. Sorry, this map here. So this is a difficult question. And uh, the thing we can do is uh, we can do certain approximation by algebraic cycles, as I, I will explain here. So let's consider the zero locus of this function phi, denoted to be a z phi, with this uh, close embedding to, to the ambient space. So we know that there's a middle triangle relating this nearby cycle functors, vanishing cycle sheet functors, and, and pull back to the zero locus. And this, this gives you the canonical map from the primal homology of, of the zero locus uh, to the vanishing cycle sheaf homology. So because, because now we are in the algebraic geometric setting, so we also have a child group of algebraic cycles on this zero locus. Uh, we have a cycle map from this child group to the primal homology of the, the zero locus. And we can consider the composition of these two maps. It gives you the basically give you the algebraic cycles on this uh, vanishing cycle sheaf homology. So there's a case theory version uh, by the following equivalence of categories. 
So the right hand side is the matrix factorization categories of this uh, uh, smooth variety W with function phi. And the left hand side is, uh, is the so called singularity categories, which is a direct category of the zero locus module of this uh, perfect complexes on, on this zero locus. So this equivalence uh, by the work of Olof and this BFK in more general setting. So now we consider the Grosendi group. We can obtain a subjective map from the uh, uh, the, the, the k zero of this uh, zero locus of phi to the to this critical k theory, to the k theory of this matrix factoring categories. So so now the point is that uh, in this critical k theory or this uh, vanishing cycle sheaf homology, vanishing cycle sheaf sorry a homology here, we we, we can take uh, uh, states from here coming from algebraic cycles from child groups, or from this. Uh, 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 K theory of this uh, zero locus. So if we replace this uh, critical K theory or, or vanishing cycle shift homology by this two space, we can define the natural pullback map. So which says that we can we can have a construct a natural pullback map from the child group of zero locus of these uh, functions to the to the four fold moduli the, 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 the child group of four fold moduli and similarly for the K theory, and they satisfy natural functorial properties. Uh, which you use to prove uh, gluing formulas. So uh, let me give you some uh, key uh, features about this uh, uh, the, about the theorems. So the first is that uh, because now in, we are in the very high dimensions four four case, um, so the uh, we need a framework of shifty sympathetic geometries. So which in this case we consider as MD, which is critical global critical locus. And the derived critical locus has a so-called minus one shift in sympathetic structures. And it's, it's, it's mapped to this uh, natural map to this ambient space, uh, has a shifted Lagrangian vibration structures. And moreover, this four for moduli restriction to this uh, modular shift on uh, this Calabria free for D has a Lagrangian structures. And if you compose this Lagrangian and Lagrangian vibration, then you get minus two shift in sympathetic structures from, from here to here. So, so the point about minus two shift in parallel structures uh, it has very special obstruction theory, in the sense that the obstruction bundle uh, has quadratic form. And then we can use the so-called uh, SONC, this a characteristic class of. Yeah. So, so what does it mean to have a minus two shifted symplectic structure on a morphism? I thought you have Lagrangian structures on morphisms. Yeah. So it's the same. So it's considered a replace the. Uh, tangent, tangent complex by the relative tangent complex. Then you can formulate everything using this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, so you can. So the special obsession theory here is you, you enables you us to uh, uh, employ this uh, SONC characteristic class of Eddington and Graham, and which is localized to isotropic sections by the work of O. Thomas and this thumb. Uh, in the, uh, there's a family version by the, by the work of Andrew Park. So, um, and then having this relative theories, uh, we can formulate gluing formulas. So in this picture, we consider a, a degeneration of Calabria of four folds, uh, where these generic fibers are smooth Calabria of four, and this uh, central fiber is a glue of two four folds along this uh, common anti-canonical divisor D. And the statement is that there's a gluing formula relating invariance on the generic fibers and the relative theory we've just talked about. Okay, so let me give some exam uh, examples. Or I I yeah, please. So, so yeah, I mean this uh, child group version. Yeah, child group of zero locus. Um, so the first application is that we consider the simplest Calabria L4, uh, which is this alpha in space C4, and we consider the simplest non-trivial example of modular sheaf on this uh, C4, uh, which is Hilbert scheme of points on, on C4. And, and C4 is non-compact, so we need some um, torus action to make it proper. So the, 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 the torus is similar as before. We consider this uh, C star 4 acts on C4 by standard actions, and we take a Calabria L subtorus, this T1 times 2 T4 equals to 1. So we preserve holomorphic volume form C4. 
And then we can consider uh, the torus fixed points of these uh, Hilbert schemes, uh, which in this case is uh, not 3D Young diagram, but it's a 4D Young diagram. You lay boxes in 4D space. And, and, and in, the, uh, in the language of compound torics, this is also called uh, solid partitions um, of size n. You like uh, n boxes in this 4D space. So, so uh, the compound torics of this uh, solid partition is very difficult. And at this, at this point still, there's no known closed formula even conjecturally for the for the for, for their cons, and McMahon himself gave a, a wrong guess, uh, 1915. Um, so now the, the point is that because we are in the Calabria 4-4 case, we can consider this DT theories, and this uh, virtual class here with the uh, equivalency with respect to this torus T. Um, so the virtual dimension here is is positive. And, and it's good to, to put some insertions. So here the insertion we take is we, we fix some line bundles, which is a T equivalent line bundles on this C4. And we consider tautological bundles on this uh, Hilbert schemes, where the fibers at each point is just the, the section of this, uh, um, the, the bundle restricted to this uh, little dimensional sub-scheme uh, Z. So by riemann roth we know this is always uh, n dimensions because this points there's no high cohomology. So now we have uh, cycles of uh, complex n dimensions, and we have uh, uh, complex uh, rank n vector bundles on this Hilbert schemes on these cycles. We can take all our class and integrate. So the following theorem give a, a close evaluation of of this uh, integrations. So the left hand side is a uh, uh, equivalent all our class of this tautological bundle against uh, this equivalent virtual class, and we take a, a generation series. So the right-hand side is the a closed formula, where the base is the McMahon functions, which is the partition function for 3D on diagrams, and the power is the third equivalent trend class of C4 times the first equivalent trend class of this, uh, the insertion we take, the line bundle L. So, so the, the proof we, for the proof, we use this uh, gluing formula we have developed, uh, uh, we just, uh, I just said, and also similar pole analysis as this work of uh, Marlin, Krasov, Okunkov, and Pandora Panda on, on free folds. Um, so I, I give several remarks. The first is uh, uh, Nikrasov uh, conjecture uh, a case theoretical version of the bio formulas um, and, and uh, a work in progress of uh, Martin Ku and Renomo, they, 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 they prove it by the so-called factorization sequence of, uh, uh, of uh, Okunkov. So uh, the advantage for us uh, is uh, we have degeneration formulas, so we can comp compute this uh, also relative theories and also the absolute theory for all log local Calabria curve, so which is total space of the sum of line bundles on curve C. But we don't need a curve to be toric. The curve can be arbitrary genus because, because we have degeneration technique. So uh, let me give a second example uh, of applications. So the, the example is uh, we consider the P1 and consider the direct sum of three line bundles on this P1. So this Y is now the fourfold. And we consider the uh, a divisor D in this fourfold, which is the, the fiber of this map at the at the uh, uh, n smooth points, P1 to Pn, the fiber of this map, which is a uh, disjoint union of uh, n copies of C3. So uh, if we impose this log Calabria condition, that the, the sum of this degree is n minus 2, n is the number of C3. So, so this D is an anti-canonical divisor of y. So this is a log Calabria of four pair. And recall that we have this uh, restriction maps from this 4 4 moduli to this 3 uh, 4 moduli. And considering suitable stability, it, such map has uh, components uh, given by this, uh, the following map. So the left hand side is the so called uh, uh, P1 parameterized cosine maps from genus, genus 0 cosine maps with unmarked points. And the right hand side is the just Hilbert scheme of points on this divisor D, which is the n copies of Hilbert scheme points on C3. So, so a close point of this uh, uh, map looks like this. 
So, so first of all, this, this a, a point here is, uh, is given by a map f from this uh, configuration of rational curve to Hilbert scheme of points on C3. And this uh, rational curve has a, uh, a distinguished component this here, which is isomorphic to the, the P1, which contrasts all other rational tails. And it has two special points, P1 and P, P, P2. Let's say n equals to two case. We can evaluate at these uh, two points to, to, to go to Hilbert schemes. And, and this is the restriction map. You just given this map, and you can evaluate at these two points, you get two points in this. You get a point in this Hilbert scheme of points. So in this case, the above relative 4D theory defines a Gomorphiton type invariance for this Hilbert scheme of points on C3. So I want to say that this is non-trivial in the sense that uh, when D is bigger than equal to 4, this is a singular space. So, so it's, uh, it's not clear uh, how to define Gomorphiton theories before. Um, the next result says that uh, it's, we, 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 can, we can do much better, not necessarily Hilbert scheme and points on C3. We can do for any quiver with potentials or critical loc locus in a, in a GIT quotient and define the Gomorphiton type invariance for such critical locus. Um, and then the remark is that, uh, uh, first remark is that this uh, give, uh, gives uh, one, uh, at least uh, one mathematical approach to the this partition functions of this uh, so-called 3D n equals 2 supersymmetric gauge theory. Uh, because now it's n equals 2 because we consider critical locus instead of this holomorphic implanted uh, uh, varieties. And also relative to this uh, so-called gauge linear sim sigma model, uh, which relevant to this after the work of uh, Witten and many mathematicians here. So secondly, uh, such partition functions can be used to extract information of this uh, uh, quantum group actions on this uh, uh, the state space, this partition cycle shift homology, along with these ideas and works of Okunkov school previously on Nakajima quiver varieties. So, so if you start with a Nakajima quiver, you can always uh, make it to be a quiver with potentials by adding a, a loop at each circle vertex. So Nakajima quiver varieties uh, fits into this uh, um, this equivalent with, with potential framework. And, and finally, I, s I just raised this uh, question and the uh, interesting direction to consider is uh, uh, th there should be a stable envelope or maybe the question is whether this uh, stable envelope construction of Mali Okunkov and this Agenergic Okunkov uh, uh, for, for not just Nakajima quivers but for quiver with potentials. And the, the interesting question is uh, whether is whether such theory exists and whether it has a connections to the above uh, invariance. Okay, I think I'm a little, little bit fast, so let me just uh, stop here and just uh, wait for questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for a nice talk. It was uh, indeed a bit fast, so we have time for questions, so please. When you say gromov witten type invariance, what exactly do you mean by that? So, say again? Say gromov witten type invariance for the Hilbert scheme, what exactly do you mean by that? Ah, what do, uh, yeah, so, the, so, so, yes. So let me go back to here. So if you look at here, so the Hilbert scheme of points on C3 is a global critical locus. So you can you can view this as a, you can view this as a, a just standard cohomology cohomology of uh, so let's say so if the one phi is equal to zero, this is just the ordinary homology of, of, of cohomology. And then if you have this map, you can just uh, push forward this moduli to to to, to a point, and uh. this gives you an evaluation of of states. So this basically, if you insert this as a insertion, call module insertion, you get this uh, Gromov written invariance. So the point is that if you have this map, you can push forward to points, then this gives you Gromov written theory, in this sense. Yeah. If you view this as state space, you have, you have curve counting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any 
any other. Yeah. Okay, can you clarify? Um, so at, here you've written the critical cohomology, and at some point you start instead using borel moore homology of the zero locus. That's are you right. working in some setting where those are the same, or what, what exactly is the situation? Yeah, so, so yeah, that's a very good question. So, so in general, this, okay, so in general, this canonical map is, sorry, this canonical map is, you don't know this is isomorphism. Sometimes it's even zero. But for example, in some high spin case, you, this is isomorphism. But in some case, this is not isomorphism. So the point is that if the states come from algebraic cycles, so you can define it using algebraic geometry. Yeah. And, and, and if you consider this uh, GISM case, some people just study so so-called narrow sectors, which are algebraic cycles. So essentially, they come from this map. If you consider K-theory, this is better, because in the K-theory case, this is always subjective. So all states, they come from the zero locus. So in a way that if you construct, if, we, if you can show that the, this perfect complex go to zero under this map, so you can descend this map to this critical K-theory. Yeah. By, by any case, so, so there's a map here, so you can, you can evaluate all the states. You can consider k theoretical gomorphism theory for, for all the critical locus. Yeah. Is that okay? Other questions? I have one. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> do you have any thoughts on the high rank theory? Uh, high rank, yes. Um, um, I think one difficulty of high rank is about the, these degenerations. So, so the theory of Li and Wu, they, they only work for rank one case. Because if it's a rank one, if you restrict to divisor, this is automatically stable. But if in high rank case, it's more complicated. So it's certainly interesting to consider high rank, but it's too difficult at this point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's another question. Uh, so in one slide you have this uh, quiver diagram. Yes. So yes. can you elaborate more on like uh, how to connect those? Yes, right. How to connect this quiver to the to the Young diagram or the like the solid partition? And also uh, this is enough. For, this is plan partitions. So so first of all the the crit, sorry. So the critical locus is uh, um, is here by skin of points. So you, you can consider this, uh, not, not this diagram, but with two, two, two loops, then this is a Hilbert scheme of points on C2 case. And, and, and in there, you can also consider a torus action. And the fixed point will be so-called a partition, just a partition of a number. You write a, you decompose a number into this. For example, 4 equals to 2 plus 2, 1 plus 1. So in this one-dimensional higher case, you just replace this one-dimensional partition by by this two-dimensional partition, which in, in Young diagram is raised one dimensions because partition is goes to Young diagrams, but, but plan partition goes to 3D Young diagrams. So that's, so that's, that's a precise analogy here. OK. Ah, there's a question there. I suppose it's just a comment. So there's a class of 3DN equals to two theories for which the, the whole story of 3D mirror symmetry should generalize, and in particular also uh, the relation to geometric representation theory. So yes. it sounds like the, the technology you're developing is just perfect for that. In particular, it, they involve the introducing potentials to the N equals to four story. So um, it's wonderful to develop this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very interesting to see whether whether you can incorporate this uh, potential into this mirror symmetry, 3D mirror symmetry. Yeah, but. For a special class of theories, yeah. Yeah, but at least I don't, I think it's too, too, I don't, I don't have any idea anymore. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can talk. Wait, are we 
very surprising thing that, that, that 3D mirror symmetry would extend in a nice way to, to, to a class of theories, but it does, with relation to representation algebra. Okay. Not ordinarily algebra, as for n equals to 4k, but really super algebra. It's actually not, not known to mathematicians. Yes. But, what, what that, but there are physics predictions, so. Great, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so if there are no further questions, we can uh, thank the speaker again for the nice talk.